I'm McKinney Smith. After going through a divorce, my sister passing away, experiencing narcissistic abuse, and some significant health scares, I realized through sharing my story that I wasn't alone in my suffering. Suffering, subjective distress generated by the experience of being out of balance. In a deep dive to holistically heal mind, body, and soul is where I discovered peace, clarity, and connection. It is impossible to be truly wise without some real-life hardship, and we cannot develop post-traumatic wisdom without making it through, and most importantly, through it together. Social connection builds resilience, and resilience helps create post-traumatic wisdom, and that wisdom leads to hope. Hope for you and others witnessing and participating in your healing, and hope for your community. A healthy community is a healing community, and a healing community is full of hope because it has seen its own people weather, survive, and thrive. Thank you for joining us on the Heal Her podcast, H-E-A-L, Honor, Elevate, and Love Her podcast, formerly known as the Iwaka My Stilettos podcast the top 1.5% most popular show globally where we have conversations with extraordinary women on their journey toward wholeness and harmony. And since you're already here, you may as well subscribe. As a certified mindset coach guiding women towards peace, clarity, and connection within, supporting the direction of the system toward wholeness, my goal here is to help you thrive. For the last four years, I have interviewed only women. For 2023, I've made the decision to open up the conversation to men who are about helping women to evolve and honor, respect, and love herself. So today's guest is Ty Hunter. He's a stylist, creative director, and author. He became a major force in the fashion industry as he helped shape an entire generation of fashionistas through his role as Beyonce stylist for 18 years. Ty has gone on to design his own collections and has shown them at New York Fashion Week. His design career continues with the collaboration with A-Cloud, and he recently joined forces with one of the most exciting names in fashion today when he became Billy Porter's head stylist and creative director. For two decades, Ty Hunter has created some of the most iconic and talked about looks on the red carpet at top tier events in global hit music videos and for the biggest concert tours on earth. But if you ask his stellar clients, such as Rosario Dawson, Naomi Campbell, they will all tell you that Ty is also a trusted friend, close confidant, and inspiring force, who, as Kelly Osborne says, is that rare breed of human who is equally kind and talented. In his memoir, Makeover from Within, Lessons in Hardship, Acceptance, and Self-Discovery, Ty Hunter shares his journey that brought him from humble beginnings to the top of his field and made him a trusted influencer to fans around the world. From his Texas country youth through struggles that tested him physically, mentally, and emotionally, causing him to reevaluate his beliefs and self-identity to pivotal moments in his career that inspired him to grow and transform. Ty's positivity and perseverance will inspire anyone who yearns to find their place, but isn't sure exactly how. So please welcome to the show, Ty Hunter. Hello, thank you for having me. And happy new year. <laughs> and happy new year to you too. I'm so excited and I'm I'm grateful to you and your team because for a while now I've been contemplating about having men on the show as guests for the last four years. I've been strictly focused on having women and we shifted the focus of the show about healing and how to honor um, love and respect ourselves and there's been so many men that have approached me to have and be a part of these conversations. And what better way to start than with you and, you know, talking about your, your book, um, the makeover from within. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. 
So before we get to where you are presently, I love to learn a little bit more about where things started. I like to learn about, you know, what you wanted to be as a child and who you wanted to become. Okay. So as a child, um, just growing up, I was always into fashion. I loved hair. I loved clothes. I loved the the whole glam part. Um, When I was a kid, my dad took me to see Diana Ross, just me and my dad. And my dad is like a man, like sports, 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 sports. And all of my guy cousins are sports. Even my, to be honest with you, the women in my family, my mom, she's a Dallas Cowboy fan. My aunt is a Dallas Cowboy. Like they're all into sports. I was never into sports. But if you say we're going to Salvation Army, Goodwill, to the mall, to any of those places, I was so down for it. So clothes has always been, and fashion has always been in me, um, to ever think that I would be getting paid for something that I love uh, and that it'd be my purpose. I never thought that. I literally would grow up and go thrifting with my great-grandmother and my grandmother and um, just the fun part of finding jewels in the thrift store and putting things together has always been like my happy place. And I literally did not get into fashion to much, 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 much later in growing up. And I was best dressed in high school and junior high. I would always, and people would actually always want my opinion. Like my mom, my dad, and my family, like whenever people would get dressed, my aunts and cousins and stuff, they, they want my opinion. And I would also get paid some time to go school shopping with some of my friends' parents uh, because they really loved my eye and fashion. And I ended up working in, I went to, to college, to, to Art Institute in Dallas to for music video business. I wanted to go for fashion, but I didn't want to be called gay. I didn't want to be the gay guy because, you know, back then fashion was just so attached to gay. If he was doing hair, he was gay. If he was fashion, he was gay. So I was like, no, I don't want to do that. But I found myself, even in music video, going to school for that. Ask me to get in front of a mixing board today, I wouldn't know what to do. (laughs) But I hung out with the fashion kids and I, I just live for dressing up to go to school. So I really wasted my parents' money going to that school <laughs> because I didn't do nothing there but party and get dressed up and, and be cute. But I ended up um, moving back to Austin, Texas. This was in Dallas, Texas. And I moved back to Austin, Texas, and I started working in the medical field. And I used to work on artificial heart valves, believe it or not. I used to sit under a microscope and work at artificial heart valves. And I made really good money. And it was a place, um, the most that I really loved about this company was the mixing pot of different cultures. Like, I, I you know, back in Texas, every every time you saw an Asian person, you'd be like, oh, she's Japanese or Chinese. That's all they know. But no, these are my Cambodian friends. These are my friends from, you know, the, you know, I just learned all the different cultures. And I worked with a lot of Ethiopians and just a lot of different beautiful people. And so I decided to move. Um, they had family leave. I decided to move from Austin to Houston on a three-month trial um, because the president at the time had family leave. So I went to my boss and made up this lie that I wanted to, my, my family, I got issues and I need a moment. And I was like, I just need a month. So I called my cousin who lived in Houston, Texas, and that's kind of how everything happened. I moved to Houston, Texas. I started doing window dressings for different stores there. I met Beyonce's mom, Miss Tina, and we just kind of connected. And so after a couple of years of knowing her and meeting each girl separately, um, and Destiny's Child would like, no, no, no on the radio. So they're like neighborhood superstars at the time and just growing and growing and growing. And uh, she was like, I need help. I'm going to get you out of here one day. And I didn't believe her. And I called her and the rest is history immediately on this off day that I needed. I called her and I immediately started working on the Survivor video in the Grammys. And that's kind of like the cliff notes of my <laughs> early <Wow. stuff> now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. A powerful yeah. cliff notes. <laughs> Very powerful <laughs> cliff notes. <laughs> so I love when people talk about, you know, what they wanted to be and see that even if you pivoted for a minute, you came back to what you believed was your core purpose. You know, sometimes people want to be things when they're they're kids and they end up not doing anything in that profession. And you, you also spoke to, you know, your mom and in the book, you pay tribute to all the women in your life, to, you know, the matriarchs in your family. 
what foundational lessons have you taken from these women in your life? You know, just go get it. Like just to be a go getter. And um, I remember when I wanted to move to Houston because I was, I'm such a family person. I mean, my mom, my mom is my everything. And so it was just hard to detach from her and to become a man. Like I knew I had to do it because my mom did everything for me. Everything. She was a single mother and me and my brother, like she washed my clothes. She just did everything. Like, and it's like, okay, boy, you gonna have to get out of this house and <laughs> find yourself. So I had to make it a point, but more than anything I learned from them, this family, you know, is important. And, you know, my grandmother took care of my great grandmother. My great grandmother took care of her mother. My mom took care of my grandmother. And so it's like, if my mom was sick, you know, just being a caretaker and just being there I, I, as much as I can is important to me because family over everything, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Family over everything, for sure. I was going to ask you another question, but then you mentioned, you know, taking care of your mother. And I guess there was a point in your career where you had to take care of both of your parents when they were yeah. um, facing cancer. How did those experiences shape you? It really, my mom and dad were both diagnosed with cancer kind of right around the same time. Wow. And they've been separated since I was a kid. My mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, stage four. And I was in New York uh, getting ready to go to this show. And my mom called me and she, she always, they always keep stuff from me being that I'm in New York and they're in Texas. They wait to the lat like down to nothing and uh, I was like mom why you didn't tell like you know so I literally just left and went to the airport and when I got there my dad he just stepped up and he was always there for me because I never left my mom's side in the hospital I literally stayed on that little chair next to the bed Mm -hmm. I just made that thing work you know Um, and I just stayed at the hospital and took bird baths every day and I would go get me some inexpensive clothes at Target or Walmart and I just stayed there with my mom all the way up for about three months and like in two and a half of those months my dad he didn't wasn't able to get out the bed one day and he has really he was really there for me like coming to check on me and making sure like I would get breaks in between and stuff and um, he couldn't get out the bed one day and they found out he had um cancer uh, on his spine um, that was wow. keeping his nerve endings or something from working. And they did tests and found out he had prostate cancer. And wow. so I would spend half the day with my dad and half the day with my mom, you know, radiation, chemo treatments and stuff like that. And um, my dad eventually passed away. Uh, it's been about almost three years now. Um, no, and so my my mom um, is still going through chemo and stuff. And um, what I've learned from this is that I I didn't know my own strength at all. Like, I didn't know that I would, you know, it's like I had to pull up to, to find strength to let them know and when they see me that it's going to be okay. Immediately when my mom told me I was at the hospital and they gave her that information, I normally I would break down and cry, but I'm like, my mom looked over at me and I just, I, I just had to pull this strength from somewhere and and you know and I'm still I just learned a lot about myself this journey and 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 my dad he passed away I had to leave because I was moving from from New York to LA and I had to leave my dad for four days and I'm like dad I'm gone for four days I'll be right back and I mean I was checking on him and stuff and he waited to pass away when I got back to him and touched him he -hmm. passed away and I ended up with his body for a couple of hours. And that whole process of death just really became something else to me. It became something that was so, it's almost, I wouldn't say beautiful, but it, the understanding of it all and knowing that we're all going to leave. I could be the most healthy, eating right, da 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 trying to be the right person, da 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 And it's still, when it's your time, it's your time. And it's a whole part of the journey. And I can say, um, just... My ancestors, my grandmother, my grandmother, like when they passed away, how many, I just see it more as um, they're not leaving. Like the physical has left, but like my blessings are pouring in more when they passed and like they handling things, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just get it as a whole nother thing. This is part of the journey of life, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Wow. My my heart goes out to you. And, you know, I, I'm sorry that you had to endure that experience of having both parents at the, the same time uh, dealing with cancer. My my partner lost both his parents in the, the same year, his father from cancer. Um, so I can't even imagine, you know, the emotional strength and resilience that it, it takes. So I, I continue to pray for your, your strength. Oh, it will break you down, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like I, I had to find strength, not just for me, but for my mom and my dad and my siblings and, you know, family members and stuff, because, you know, it's just important to, to just really stay there and help them fight through it and give mm-hmm. them the strength, just being me, just bawling out and, making them feel, you know, like they can't overcome it, you know, yeah. because I, for a fact, my mom will overcome cancer. I'm, I'm yes. rooting for her. And, you know, it's not an easy journey. And she has moments where she go through depression and don't do the right things. But, you know, it's my, just for my sanity. And, and you know, I, 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 you just feel so much better when you know you've given it your all. Mm-hmm. And so even my position with my dad leaving, I knew I did all that I could possibly do. And I know that the love was there and he felt the love. And so that's what's more important than anything. Absolutely. Every time I have a conversation with someone that's lost a loved one that's close to them, obviously it's a a, a very heavy sentimental conversation, but it's like your view of life shifts after Mm -hmm. losing someone close to you. It, 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 it truly does. And you know, what you said about the blessings, you know, pouring in more. My sister passed away in 2012. And then my grandmother who helped raise me passed away the following summer. And, you know, they say you're our pain births our purpose, but it was like the, the blessings came like in abundance after that. And it was like, you know, that they're looking after you, that they've got your back. You're good. Yeah. So I can totally, totally relate to to what you said there. You you mentioned earlier, like when you got into fashion, you know, you at first wanted to stay away from it because they were labeling, you know, men that were in fashion automatically gay. And you talked about in your book how before you even decided to experiment or even go in that direction, you were being labeled as gay. How did that affect you? It, it, you know, I, I I can say that I'm blessed to have family and friends who allow me to be myself. I, I've always had feminine like mannerisms and stuff that I had to like learn to kind of like break down when I went into the real world. But behind closed doors with family, friends, even my girlfriends, like they would, I was just me. You know, they allowed me to be myself. My daughter allowed me to be myself. You know, when she come later, um, but. It was hard. It was it was tough because people just automatically just being called gay or fag and something on the outside world. It's just you become kind of immune to it and it gives you this tougher skin to where it's like you have to learn that words don't hurt. As long as you're not touching me, you can call me whatever I want. But I know who I am and I know I'm a child of God. And so therefore that barrier is going to be there anyway. It's bouncing off of me. And so I had to learn to not let you know, the ignorance of the world come at me and stuff. But it, it really allowed me to become stronger and to really learn to focus on loving myself and unconditionally to where things don't affect me. And mm-hmm. so being black and being gay, it's mm-hmm. like those things, especially back then when like, ah, you, those are the, the worst things to be at the time. And now, you know, I'm, I love who I am and I love that, um, the strength I have to just go out and know who I am. You can call me what you want, but I know who I am and God knows who I am. So mm-hmm. that's all that matters. And, lo- and as long as my loved ones love me, my mom and my daughter and my family and my good, good, good friends, I don't care what nobody has to say. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> People are going to talk. You're never going to be able to like, I, you know, and I, that's why I tell people, like, you got to find the strength. Like, if you're not able to scroll down after you post, because people are just evil and unhappy and bitter and just wrong. And so people come at me. I'm the nicest person on the planet and my page is full of positivity. And there's times when people just say the nastiest things to me about me. And I'm just like laughing because it is just you just got to get to a place where you know who you are and you know 
you and the, the higher powers understand that. And I just pray for that person. And because apparently it's something wrong with them, not me. Yeah. It's a, it's people project their own insecurities onto other people and how they interact with people. Right. Yeah. So obviously it took a journey to get to that place of self-acceptance. What advice would you give to anyone listening that is on their journey to self-acceptance? You have to learn to be with self. You have to learn to break away and be alone, even if it's taking a vacation. Like once I learned to like travel alone, simple things like going to movies alone, um, I reward myself now. Like if if I like I got this or this happened or whatever, okay, I'm gonna go to a nice restaurant. I'm gonna give me a nice glass of wine and I'm gonna just be in this big ass restaurant by myself. And it's just like learning to be alone because I felt like once I learned to be alone and just really live in that, I learned to understand myself more and get quite, you know, I communicate with myself and you, you got to get to a place of looking in that mirror and loving that person wholeheartedly. I say this all the time, as far as fashion wise, we're not born with clothes on. Our first outfit is our skin. And until you get right in that one, everything else is, is just going to always be a problem. So once, and that's how confidence comes from learning to love yourself wholeheartedly. I could put mm-hmm. on something. I don't care what I, what people think when I, when I walk out this door, because I right. already had to communicate person in the mirror. Now, people might not agree with that or think I look a fool or look a mess, but the way I carry myself allows people to be like, you know what? Okay. You know, when Gaga came out in the meat dress, she got on the meat dress, but you know, people are trying to cut up steaks <laughs> and wear them. You know? It's all about confidence. The people that we admire, it's not about the clothes. It's about them having confidence to walk out in that and and it just makes you see it in a whole different light. So you just got to get, learn to love yourself, learn to be alone, learn to really write things down. Um, journaling is important. Um, prayer, it, whatever, whoever you praying to, but just learn to communicate with that higher being or whatever that is for you. And just learning to, to visualize seeing better. Like if you keep, a negative mindset or keep seeing negative things. Like I literally, when I fast, I fast from people that are negative on social media, these damn TV shows that are on this flat. You know, I can't, I can't be fasting and I'm up here watching these girls fight each other and Mm -hmm. this gossip mess and all that stuff. Like I'm trying to evolve and become great. And so I'll find myself watching, you know, people buying homes and, you know, things like that. that You know, travel channel and shit like yeah. things like that. <laughs> so you just get to the place of just wanting better and you can't want better if you're stuck in those same ways. So it's literally I had to take a whole shift of like I'm not gonna eat these type of foods that I know that are not good for me. You know, it's just like and you can have yourself cheat days. You're human, you know what I mean? But I had to do a whole cleansing and just, you know, um when I do feel like I want to fall a little bit I, I, it's like I'm going to fall on Saturday because on Friday I did this, this, and this. And so Friday I'm going to eat this and, or I'm going to go out and do this or I'm going to go do things that I know that ain't right for me. But <laughs> even in the worst times, I still want to add the higher powers in it for protection. But it's, it's okay to reward yourself every blue moon, not consistent, but every blue moon, yeah. There are so many things in what you just said that I love. Um, I can't break them all down. But when when you talked about the importance of being with yourself, getting to know yourself, you know, oftentimes people will focus on, you know, whether you're getting to know a new partner or friend or business, like you invest time in getting to know that person. You invest time in understanding what their needs are, their wants are, their mannerisms, their personality, their voice. But a lot of people don't spend that much time or invest that much time into getting to know themselves. So I yeah. love that you you made that point. And maybe because I'm an introvert, it's easier for me where I feel like there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Like I would rather be alone at home with myself than be in a room full of, you know, empty energy. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is, that's so important. Absolutely. Yeah. And you mentioned fasting. I would love if you could explain how, I guess, the, the benefits of fasting for you and how it how you've seen it work for you. I'm telling you, once I showed the higher powers 
that I'm working with you. Like we can pray for these things, but what what do you you got to go out and do some things, you know what I mean? And you got to show that I'm invested in this time. So I'm a, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to be do this and I'm not going to do this. And and it's like showing the higher powers that I'm I'm meeting you more than halfway and and I, I'm ready for change and it's not easy. It's not easy, mm-hmm. but it's so rewarding and it's simply like even like you know, I have one just one friend. I was like, "Girl, do old school. Get a calendar, X out the day." So when you visualize how far you went without cutting up, you know what I mean, and doing these things that you know that are hindering you from greatness, you know, it just helps. And I swear to you, when I gave up a lot of things and I and I talked to God and 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 you know, I'm like, I want this, and I'm I'm showing you how much I want this because I'm, you know stopping all of these things that I know that are hindering me from and that are blocking me from just getting a a, a, a mindset of, you know, just clearing the, the lane. You know what I mean? You got to clear the lane for the blessings to come in. Yeah. And I feel like we tend to, to um, instead of, you know, putting that energy in ourselves, we tend to do quickies being it's, it's you know, drinking a lot, drugs, masturbation, sex, all these things that just like pile up, pile up, pile up for quick fixes. Let's mm-hmm. d- just get the real fix in there. You know what I mean? Let's set this stuff aside mm-hmm. and really clear the lane so we can allow things to come in and really work with us and, and just to see the light, you know? And I'm not saying I'm perfect, you know, I might pop over here sometime, but I'm in control now. It's not controlling me. You know right. what I'm saying? So right. I'm going da 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 and I'm a da 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 da. But <laughs> after I da 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 da, it's a wrap. You know what I mean? I'm back to clean slate. And this crazy thing is once you go back over here, it's fun and all that, but then you feel bad. When you do it, because you've seen all the pride, I don't went all this time without doing these things. And now I just went and did this. So it's just a different kind of thing. And I swear to you, since I've really gained full control of my life as much as I possibly can, and I know that I'm not controlling it, the higher powers are controlling it, but I am showing them that I am really working on trying to protect this vessel and uh, and I'm appreciative of, and grateful for life in another day. So it just makes it a whole nother thing. And I'm so in tune with who I am today. I'm so in tune with every being and I'm the happiest. And I don't know, I'm just feel better than I ever have in my whole life. And I'm 50 years old and it took me. To and like you do not look anything close to 50. <laughs> Thank you. But, um, you know, it's just learning to be in complete control and in tune with the vessel. You know what I mean? And so I just feel like we have to, I always say we're we're Easter eggs, like trying to make this shell look so pretty to like, but what's inside? Is it, is it a yolk? Is it a bird? Is it confetti? Is it hollow? What's inside? And your yolk is what you have to work on because your, your soul and, you know, it's bigger than this thing. It's bigger than what you see. You know what I mean? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm trying to go mm-hmm. there, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I have to, like, really pull it all together and just really take control. And so, like, now I can say I'm sitting in this shell and I'm in full control. I love it. From everything that you explained about your fasting, like, three words came to my spirit. Sacrifice, discipline, and clarity. From everything that yeah. you just explained about your 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 fasting, I love it. <laughs> it's true because I don't know. Once you really gain control and like really just start sacrificing, you really get clarity. Like you really start, like he maps it all out for you. Like you wake up with dreams, like oh, and like things just start happening. Like it becomes bigger than you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You might have this dream getting this, but God is like, "Uh uh-uh, no, because you showed me this and because you're disciplined and because you, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, and it's just like back to back things. And like, once those things are happening, I don't want to sacrifice just for a little quickie or a little this, a little that to to tamper with what the blessings that are coming, you know, because it's exciting waking up to emails that, you know, or a text, we want you, you know, it's it's that excitement versus the excitement of this mess up here is mm-hmm. way bigger. Yeah. Blessings are pouring. 
and they're for you. And so I don't know. I'm just happy and I'm excited what's about to come because I really feel in tune with my height, you know, the universe. And I'm letting them do this thing. You know what I mean? Like I've learned to say, God, what do you want? for me what do you want this to be you know and just allowing those higher powers and i went to church with my mom sunday for christmas and the pastor's word was um favor ain't fair you know and with favor comes responsibility and i just feel like my platform and what i've used as far as social media and just me being who i am today i have a responsibility (laughs) for myself Mm -hmm. and for just keep pouring out positivity And as much as I can in these dark times and the world is so dark and I just want to be that. And that's why I use yellow for everything. Just that little piece of sunshine that you can go to for uplifting and and a laugh and craziness. And I try to, I try to post things, you know, in a way that's so real, but yet less intimidating and you can Mm -hmm. still get the word light. I hit heavy, but I hit light at the same time. It's weird as that may sound. (laughs) It makes total sense to me. (laughs) (laughs) And and I you also mentioned the the fuel that you, you put in your body. Like people sometimes will only focus on one thing, whether that be, I don't know, like the physical of what they, they eat, you know, people are only focused on that. But if you look at, you know, the mind, body and soul, what what you're fueling yourself with. Um, what are you feeding your mind with? What are you feeding your spirit with? What are you feeding your body with? And it sounds like you're doing all the, all the levels, <laughs> making sure you're checking all the boxes, going to church, believing in God, being of service, spreading light, being mindful of what you eat, where you go, what you take in, the energy. Like, no wonder your spirit's so calm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I like to be leveled, leveled. You know what I mean? Like, even when I'm happy, sad, mad, I'm, I just stay here. This is my lane. You know, I just stay in this lane. Because if you go too high up, sometimes that fall ain't right. And then when you go too low, it's like people be like, they don't know if I'm happy, mad, and sad sometimes. But I, I like to just stay at this humbling pace of just living because this is my my lane and this, what, this is my comfort. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it allows me from to deal with certain things that would normally kill the another person or you know just bring them all the way down and i don't really get affected like that i'm mm-hmm. just being honest i don't get up i get up that when i do get upset it's it's it took so long that people are looking at the other person like what did, what did you do because <laughs> <laughs> you really like people question no you did something because ty don't ever get upset or whatever <laughs> but i i literally i i i make it a point to realize that once you realize everybody's not going to react to things the way you react to things, and people are not going to make that move that you made. And so we find ourselves getting upset because we're mad at her because she, I wouldn't have did that to her. But she wasn't raised like you. Her story right. is different. Her way of thinking, she might not even know what she did. Sometimes you have to clarify, you have to step back and put on other people's shoes sometimes and be like, you know what? Hmm, I see why she would think it's that way. But let me take girl, I see you thought it was this way, but this is the way it was. You know what I mean? I I make it a point to, I call them sandwiches because we're so quick to prove that we're right or that we're not even listening. That's how arguments start. Like you're trying to prove your point. I'm trying to prove. So I always start with a piece of bread, which is look, you know, I love you. You are great. So that calmness come down. And then I throw that meat in there, but girl, you can't be da 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 da. And then when they about to build back up, I add the other piece of bread because I love you, da 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 da. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so if I hand out sandwiches every day, but you know, I try to make a sandwich just to to get people to listen and understand my point of view as well, because I'm already sacrif- like learning your point of view by putting on your shoes. And so I could see why you felt it was that way, but that was not the way it is. And mm-hmm. so once you get that, you pass out a few sandwiches, then people learn your path and you learn each other and it just makes it an easier, um, an easier thing. <laughs> I, lo- I love, so one, I love the analogy of the sandwich, you know, sa- sandwiching, or I guess it's, it's cushioning, the constructive criticism in there or something. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it allow people to listen instead of just not listening and trying to prove their point. I, I just want to 
on the ear just to hear me out, you know? So yeah. I, I kind of do that. <laughs> yeah. And I love that you mentioned perspective because I do like a lot of, because as a mindset coach, I do a lot of studying about psychology and, and trauma healing and all those things. And when someone is acting out of their trauma response because of their past experiences, they may even take a facial expression on someone that is totally innocent as yeah. you know something negative or an insult. So I say that healed people hear differently. You know, so when yeah. you are trying to look at things from different perspectives, and even when someone is coming at you with their own projections, being able to take a step back and not take that personally, and to you know even soften the response and not respond in a de- defensive way. I think society as a whole is so quick to listen to respond and not listen to understand or validate what the other person is saying. I agree. Speaking of you know society and misunderstandings, you mentioned in the book that I, I believe it was right before your 24th birthday that you were shot in a case of uh, mistaken identity. If you can, I guess, give the cold notes of that and what you've learned from that and how you've healed from that. You know, I, I'm, I'm as crazy as this may sound, I'm so glad it happened because it was a wake up call that I needed, uh, meaning that why am I going to this club that's known for shooting every weekend or known for somebody fighting every weekend or known for somebody getting stabbed every other weekend or just this madness. And um, it's because, you know, in Austin, we only had black and white, no gray. So it's like, that was a spot if you want to hear the hip hop and R&B, you know, and see your friends and stuff. But at the same time, it really made me reevaluate things because I'm a good person and I have, I have a, a beautiful heart and I'm giving and I'm loving and I'm the good guy. I wasn't selling drugs like, you know, people that I knew and a few cousins and family members and friends. Um, I always tried to stay in the perfect lane of what I thought was the perfect lane because my mom was a single parent and she wasn't strict. She allowed us to do pretty much whatever we wanted to. So to hurt her would, would just didn't even make sense to me or my brother. So we just always, you know, tried to be the right, go in the right direction and, you know, and I end up being the one getting shot this night. <laughs> and, and it's like, why me? You know, um, but I can say, you know, once you guys read the book, you will kind of understand that night. And I can say that my favorite song at the time was Lenny Kravitz, It Ain't Over Till It's Over. And the my company had gave me the walk the the CD the 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 Walkman which was a cassette player <laughs> that shows you how old I am but it used to be <laughs> that tape in for those of you who don't know um, and they gave me that single it ain't over till it's over and that song means so much to me because it's a true testimony um, I was about to turn twenty one I was shot and they came to me with guns up to my head and they shot me above of my legs and I'm I'm walking today wow. you know, through the grace of of, you know, going through King, you know, the whole thing of learning to walk and fighting and stuff to keep going. But it really taught me to, to pay attention to my surround- surroundings more. And um, when it's your time, it's your time. And you could be the sweetest person and then some things going to happen to you. So none of that matters. When it's your time, it's your time. And it wasn't my time, thank the Lord, because I have a purpose. And we go through trials and tribulations, but you can't let that hinder you and you got to keep pushing forward. Wow. Very powerful. The, you know, there's so many golden moments within your story where you've been able to turn your pain and repurpose it into something powerful and impactful for other people to empower them. But before we go to the final segment of the show, I would love if you could tell people where they could stay connected with you, where they can buy the book, where they can learn more about Ty. My social media, all my platforms for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything is Ty Try One, T Y T R Y O N E. Everybody think it's Ty Tyrone. It should have been Ty Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> But I try one, and I want you guys to try one of these, <laughs> my book, um, Ty Try One. Um, and you can get my book at TyTryOne.com, T-Y-T-R-Y-O-N-E.com. Um, Barnes & Noble's, Uber, I'm uh, not Uber, Lord Jesus, Amazon, 
uh, <laughs> Hallmark chose one of my, my book as one of the healing books um, this year. Um, Target, Walmart, uh, most bookstores you can get my book. Awesome. Awesome. So I will have the direct links for people to connect with you and buy the book in the detailed section of the episode. So they don't have to search too far. They can just click and connect and purchase. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So the final segment of the show is kind of like a rapid fire. Sometimes, you know, we try to keep it to one word or one sentence, but I don't like to live in a box. So you are free to actually answer as you please. (laughs) Okay. Name a book that has changed or greatly impacted your life. I would have to say, um, hmm, The Secret. Mm. It it came at a time in my life, um, you know, because the Bible, you know, growing up with the Bible, as a kid, it was a little difficult reading the Bibles at times uh, until I got a little older, but The Secret kind of like at least... I feel like I flow in the in the lines of how the secret was moving and manifestation and everything. And so it just came at a time where it was like, oh, okay, I'm not crazy. There's other yeah. people thinking like <laughs> Yeah. 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 Uh, to- total side note, absolutely love that you said that. So I I never read the book, The Secret. I had a friend that forced me to watch the documentary. And mm-hmm. shortly after I watched the documentary, I watched it while I was going through my divorce. And shortly after I watched the documentary, I was invited to an event to hear Bob Proctor speak. So he was one of the thought leaders um, in Mm -hmm. The Secret. And I ended up becoming um, close with Bob, his wife, and his daughter, Colleen. So it's actually him here. Bob is my my personal mentor. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. So Bob's my mentor. Um, His wife wrote the foreword for my first book, and his son wrote the foreword for my most recent book. So I see you. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Okay, next question. What impact do you want to have on the world? You know, I just want to first stamp, I was here. (laughs) Beyonce. (laughs) I was here. And, um, you know, I just want to, you know, and, and I can say I'm receiving flowers as I live, um, which is a beautiful thing. You know, I get DMs daily of you help me get through this and you help me get through that. And that's the path I want to continue. And I want to be able to continue it on a higher scale. I want to be so financially blessed that I can bless so many people financially in the right way, not just handing out money, but what is your dream? What is your goal? Let's, let's work on that. Let's help build your business and stuff like that. So I just want to continue because my happiness and my joy and my purpose, um, because I don't require a lot. Um, I'm, 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 when I tell you I'm so easy, <laughs> I, I'm so easy. I don't, a lot don't really, I get happy out of seeing other people happy. I get happiness from seeing my mom, my daughter, friends, or strangers happy. Um, And just so simply just continue to go at this path, but elevate it into a way that I can really do some hardcore blessing, you know, like opening up schools and like, you know, I want to really, really just impact the world in such a way that, that you really see a shift and change in a positive direction. Love it. Love it. Love it. What new belief, behavior, or habit has improved your life in the last five years? Just simply saying no. No, I've never been a no person. So in the last five years, like especially right right after I was walking out the house doing COVID, I'm like, I am not doing nothing I don't want to do. And I don't care what it is. I don't mm-hmm. care if it's somebody's in a birthday. I, if my <laughs> spirit says no. The first thing I, that comes to my, I listen to, because I really feel like if you that red flag in the me and it's like, girl, I don't trust him or you shouldn't go to there, whatever. And we still it's like German. try to like push it down. I'm going to go ahead and go because it is her birthday and she was there. No, girl, I don't feel like going. I'm tired. I'm going to take your lunch next week. Give me your days or whatever. Just saying no was a hard thing for me to do. And when I tell you learning to say no, has really elevated my 
just my whole spiritual awakening and mm-hmm. just really just show the universe that I'm listening to you, that gut, that gut that you gave me, I'm going to go ahead and go with that gut. And it has saved me from some crazy stuff because I had to be like, oh, such and such got shot at the thing or there was a wreck on highway such and such in the path that would have been the path I went. So it's just learning to say no. And um, I also try to do things. I try to shift it a little bit when I get up. So normally, you know, we walk the same pattern when we go to the store or we walk. I'm like, no, I'm going to go that way today. Or if my mindset is going to cross you, like, so it's just like exploring and really like breaking up the the gerbil wheel, the routine, and just really exploring and finding more about, because when you do those certain things, you find out more about yourself where you might find, oh my God, I didn't know it was an ice cream shop right here. You know, just Mm -hmm. going another direction or a shoe repair. I've been looking for a shoe repair, you know? So it's just just enjoying life and stepping out on faith and, and just exploring. <laughs> Love it. What's one of the most worthwhile investments that you've ever made? And that could be of money, time, energy. Uh, it's just simply just stepping out on faith. And, and, and I stepped away from working with the biggest female entertainer and, and, and people thought I got fired and stuff, but I had to grow and find and, and to, you know, ex- learn more about Thai, you know? And so I, I mean, I wrote TV shows. I wrote a book, like things that I never would have thought, like, you know, I did clothing lines for Foot Locker. I had billboards in Times Square. Um, I was chosen for President Obama's My Brother's Keeper initiative. He only chose seven Black men. I was one. So it's just like, when you get that gut feeling and you you having those and you could be at the top of your game, you could be like, you don't have to wait for things to fizzle out. You don't have to wait for a departure. You can move. Let the universe and let your, your spirit and your soul do its thing. Don't fight it, you know, and I'm not saying quit your job, but I am saying. <laughs> There are times when you know that you're destined for more. And if you feel like you can't go any higher, you got to move. You got to move. And so you got to prep for that. And so it's like, be it like an hour a day. So like I have a friend who he's a personal celebrity, personal trainer now, but he was in Wall Street. You know what I mean? And and it's like every day he hated this place. He's making good money. And now he's doing, he, he was always going to the gym. So he was like, I'm always at the gym. I'm always so, you know, let me give this a swirl. And and so sometimes your your hobby could be your your passion and and the reason why you're here. It can be your moneymaker. So it's just finding those things and and not being afraid and really believing that it's going to be. It's not easy. It's not. It's going to be times you're going to go through these depression of what did I just do? Dark times are going to happen, but you have to stick with it and know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. And so as long as you have the mindset that there is going to be light at the end of this thing, because I stepped out on faith and you're showing the higher beings that I really am listening and I'm, I'm going to jump. It, it goes. It goes. And I'm a walking, living testimony to that. It goes. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and just to have... Beyonce, write my forward. Billy mm-hmm. Porter, write the afterward. Tina Knowles, Michelle Williams, Kelly Rowland, Rosario Dawson, Billy Porter, Jennifer Hudson, Tashina Arnold, Kelly Osborne, Naomi Campbell, to give me my flowers, to get mm-hmm. people that I admire and love to just, I only needed one or two sentences for them to turn in three to four to five paragraphs. Just let you, let the, that, it's just touching and it's a beautiful thing. And so we we tend to worry about what other people think of us. And then sometimes we just got to catch up to how people view us. Even your haters, they hating you because they see something in you. Amen. So you got to go from there and just live your life. And it's, this is not a rehearsal. This, is, this thing is going, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> Just gotta live and do all that you want to do with good intentions and good with a good heart and good soul. And you know, God is not gonna let his good people with good intentions and good souls fall. It's not gonna happen, even if you're not where you think you're supposed to be. Quit comparing yourself to your other people. Sometimes you gotta take social media breaks. Mm-hmm. It gets depressing because you're like, I'm cute, I could have did that when that ain't even get out of there. Look at what you're doing. Compare yourself to your past and, and move forward from that and grow. 
and, and really put that 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 energy in your own foundation. Build your own house. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't even have, I don't even want to ask you any more rapid questions. I want to end on that note because I feel like you have totally just ministered to us in in this time that you have blessed us with. And I, I just want to thank, thank you, Ty, for your time, your energy, your wisdom. I truly appreciate you. And thank I know you. that those that are listening are going to get so much value from this conversation. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Thank you. (laughs) That means a lot to me. Thank you. (laughs) And to all of you healers out there until next time, subscribe on all platforms and don't forget to rate the show and leave us a review on Apple podcast. And I just want to thank each and every one of you that continues to listen each week that helped the show globally rank in the top 1.5% of most popular podcasts. And I want you to think of five, five people that you can share this episode with. And I want you to screenshot the episode and tag us on Instagram. You can tag Ty at Ty Try One. That's T Y T R Y O N E. And you can tag myself at The Real McKinney Smith. A healthy community is a healing community, and a healing community is full of hope because it has seen its own people weather, survive, and thrive. So let's continue to heal her. <laughs>